Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Good. I am great, but a little cold. So, oh, that's not supposed to be there. You remember him? Remember when he fell on my head? Done with you. You go hang out with the unicorn. So, I'm gonna do a quick little video here about how I protect my grape myrtles. Now, I don't do it this way with all of them, but if you remember, this particular crepe myrtle had some damage to it when it got sprayed by the mosquito exterminator people. They sprayed it and they weren't supposed to. So, crepe myrtles don't like that, that chemical they use to get rid of the mosquitoes. So, I'm going to go ahead and protect it the way I would my other crepe myrtles. This variety, the pink velour, I've never had to protect these before. They always come back in my zone 6 garden, no problem. But because of that setback with the mosquito spray, which eventually led to this having sooty mold and scale, I mean, it had all kinds of diseases after that happened and infestations. I'm going to go ahead and protect it just to be safe. I mean, worst case scenario, I have to get a new one, but I'd rather not because that's a setback. This guy grew an awful lot this year and it was beautiful. So I'm going to do this the way I would do with a crepe myrtle that's maybe a little bit more cold sensitive, which is mostly all of them. So for starters... A couple days ago, I sprayed this down the, all the wood with an anti-transpirant. There's a video on that from, I don't know, a few days ago. It depends on when this video comes out. The video is just called anti-transpirants, something like that. But that's going to help prevent the wind from blowing the moisture out of the wood, because the hardest part with keeping the grape myrtles alive is keeping the wood alive through the winter. They'll come back from the ground, no problem. Get them to come back from the wood, it's more challenging. Also, pardon me being kind of quiet here, my voice is a little hoarse. I think I have a bit of a cold, a sore throat, something. Well, I have this compost cage on here, and uh, normally they have these spikes that go through them. I lost the spike, so I just zip tied it together. Easy to do. And then I fill this with pine bark nuggets. See them? Pine bark nuggets. I like them because they don't tend to compact quite as much. They breathe a little bit more, so you don't always get the rot on the inside. Another thing you can do is you can first wrap the wood with frost cloth. That works wonderfully. I think that that's overkill for where I live and for this type of plant. Or you can set the cage up, fill it with mulch, and wrap the whole cage in frost cloth. Depends on what you want to do. Using the frost cloth around the wood is nifty because it helps keep the wood from being in contact with the mulch. Sometimes too much moisture can develop, things can get kind of toasty where I live. Some days, you know, we have days in the winter that it's in the 60s, but that's not normal. Normally we're below 30 all winter. It can lead to rot. It can even actually turn them to start growing, and then you get a cold snap, and then they die back, and it just causes problems. But like I said, I don't think I need to do that where I live. But that's why you would put the frost cloth around the bark instead of around the cage. For bananas, I always put it around the cage. Or plastic. That, that'll be a different video. And your objective here is to try and protect the lower third, minimum. That's going to help you get the best regrowth in the springtime from the wood to get the best sprouts coming out. Protect that lower third. Part of the reason for that is that even if the wind comes through and kills all this wood up above, if that lower third's still there, you can actually still end up with a pretty nice looking plant at the end of the year. Alright, so now I'm just going to fill it up. Probably not all the way, but most of the way. I'm trying to figure out how to record myself doing this and... Is that a tripod? I don't see it happening. So I only have four bags left, but I think that'll be enough because it's not going to be horribly cold for a while. So I think that'll be good enough for now at least. All right, about halfway done. And this is about the height where if I had anything else I wanted to put in there, like uh, maybe my sarasenias, this is when I would do that. Sometimes I throw those in there and pile the mulch on top of them to help protect them in the winter time. But uh, I'm going to do something a little different this year with those. <sighs> okay. Done with that. <laughs> a little out of breath, sorry. That's as high as I'm taking it, because uh, it's supposed to also be in the 40s and 50s. We have a cold snap right now, but it's supposed to warm back up, so I don't want to rot this. In fact, this even may be too much for right now. But let's just pretend that this is the time when I would fill this up all the way. So once I'm done filling this, I could also, you could also, wrap the top with that frost cloth, help get the wind off of it. And then you're going to have a much, much, much higher likelihood of these resprouting from the wood for you in the springtime. So I'm holding on to these two bags. That took about six. Not too bad. I put these into a triangle form. The, there's an extra panel so it can go into a square. The triangle's plenty for this. It doesn't need a whole entire huge compost bin thing going on. It says it's mostly just to keep the wind off. You could even possibly, I could have possibly not even put very much mulch in here, maybe just to this lower rim right here, and wrap the entire thing with the frost cloth or burlap and uh, stuff it with pine needles. 
that would have worked well too, but uh, I had, I have tons of mulch. See over there, just tons of mulch, so that's what I'm doing for now. This is how I protect my crepe myrtles in zone six. Try to keep that really short. <laughs> Hopefully I pulled it off. So hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. I love talking to y'all. And you can follow me on Snapchat, Trop Plant Party, Instagram, Tropical Plant Party, and on Twitter, Tropical Plant JC. I use Twitter more than anything else. But as always, hope everybody's doing well and keep on growing. Bye-bye.